If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we are going to be looking at the diet Steve Reeves used to prepare for his famous 1947 Mr. America win, which follows from the recent video where I detail Steve Reeves' actual training program for the Mr. America title, and yes, from my current research, it appears that Steve Reeves may have actually eaten up to 6,000 calories a day. And I will be completely breaking down his entire diet, that is both his regular bodybuilding diet and pre-contest diet, and share the macros and calories he would typically eat, and share what his meals actually looked like in preparation for the 1947 Mr. America competition. Steve was both lucky to be born to a mother who was a nutritionist and took to learning as much as he could about nutrition and its effects on the body and in building muscle. Being so educated in nutrition, he was not a sweet tooth and therefore ate no refined sugars, no white bread or refined flour whatsoever, meaning no cakes or biscuits or pastries unless they were made with whole grain flour. Instead, he would use honey for sweetening as it is an unadulterated substance, to quote Steve Reeves. In regards to drinks and stimulants, Steve did not drink tea or coffee or sodas like Coke, for that matter. Instead, milk was his preferred beverage, and during his bodybuilding career, it is said that he drank a lot of it, hinting again at the fact that he used the milk and squats routine to develop his mass and size. Steve also enjoyed eating great amounts of salad, fresh fruits and raw vegetables, understanding their high vitamin and mineral content and their importance in his diet. In my research on Steve's diet for the Mr. America competition, I was fortunate to find an article written by Abe Marble of the Chicago Bodybuilder magazine from 1947. Not only did he interview Steve Reeves, but took a very rare photo which shows exactly what Steve ate for breakfast alone, and was described rather accurately in the article. The amount of food Steve would put down for breakfast alone would probably astound you. The following photo shows the breakfast Steve Reeves ate and was witnessed and photographed in Chicago during the 1947 Mr. America competition the morning before the show. Steve ate half a cantaloupe, a bowl of wheat cereal and strawberries with cream and honey, four slices of buttered whole wheat toast with honey, three glasses of whole milk, three eggs with five slices of bacon. And if we calculate the macros alone for his pre-contest breakfast, this meal alone has 80 grams of protein, 232 grams of carbohydrates, and 93 grams of fat, and adds up to a whopping 2,045 calories for breakfast alone. <laughs> These numbers surely indicate that Steve was not afraid of eating, but ensured a balanced breakfast of protein, fat, to carb ratio of 1, 1 to 2, having a closer look at the following image actually shows Steve eating more than the described breakfast in the article, with up to 6 slices of whole wheat toast if I can see and count correctly, and what appears to be a large glass, I would guess about half a litre of fruit juice right smack in the middle of the table, along with the already pre-described breakfast. Further, those glasses of milk were approximately 300 mils in size, which meant that on those days where he would drink three glasses, he could easily put away almost a litre of milk for breakfast alone. This image should definitely clarify the kind of whole natural diet that Steve enjoyed while bulking up and training for his first national competition and should remove any misconceptions, such as the diet he would later use consisting of his power drink breakfast, cottage cheese and fruit for lunch, and tuna steak with salad for dinner. Such a calorie restricted diet may have been used at a later date, and I want to discuss this later on as well, uh, for example in preparation for the Mr. Universe, after he had already developed the mass required to win bodybuilding competitions. 
Now, a further newspaper article from September the 5th, 1947, recently showcased by Scott from Scott York Fitness, not only confirms the kind of breakfast that Steve ate before his competition, but what Steve would regularly eat during his competitive years. Steve's average breakfast included a half a grapefruit, whole wheat cereal with honey raisins and a sliced banana, three soft boiled eggs with ham, sausage or bacon, four pieces of toast with butter and jam or jelly, and two glasses of milk, which equates to 72 grams of protein, 229 grams of carbohydrates, and 73 grams of fat, and a total of 1,824 calories, which was almost identical to the report from Chicago Bodybuilder regarding his pre-contest diet. Lunch usually consisted of a large salad, two cheese sandwiches, two glasses of milk, and an orange or an apple, which when added, his macros were 55 grams of protein, 147 grams of carbohydrates, and 59 grams of fats, and totaled at a much more modest 1,400 calories. As a snack though, Steve would whip up a protein shake consisting of a pint or 500 mils of ice cream, milk, probably a glass of milk, and a couple of bananas, and blend all that up. I am assuming he would eat slash drink this after his two hour workouts. And that is one enormous post-workout shake. It's over a liter in volume, in fact. And this shake alone contained 22 grams of protein, 137 grams of carbohydrates, 42 grams of fat, totaling 986 calories. Although his dinner is not described, I assume that it would consist of a steak, or other source of animal protein, some baked potato, steamed vegetables, and perhaps fruit salad like with with jelly as a dessert. The macros for this standard dinner would be 103 grams of protein, 170 grams of carbohydrates, and 47 grams of fat, totaling over 1500 calories, 1508 calories to be precise. Now, if all of this holds true, which I have to assume it does, because his diet was written in great detail more than once, reported more than once, then Steve would have been ingesting close to 6,000 calories a day during his bodybuilding days, which is an astounding amount of food. Considering that he was training two hours a day, three times a week, and training after breakfast, and usually hitting the beach after and doing gymnastics and hand balancing again, as the newspaper article suggests, it is no surprise that the young Reeves had such a voracious appetite. I know many of you must be thinking, but what about the Steve Reeves Hercules cookbook? where Steve Reeves' competition diet is explained, which included his power drink, cottage cheese and fruit for lunch, and animal protein and salad for dinner, which was about, you know, 2,000 calories a day, more or less. Well, as much as I want to believe what was written in this publication, the book was written in 2010, 10 years after Steve Reeves' death. And although the book is considered an authoritative work on Reeves' nutrition and diet principles, The book's recipes were gathered from his friends and family that lived with Reeves after his retirement from competition, as well as interviews with Reeves and others, and would be highly influenced then by his ranching lifestyle. I always wondered how Reeves could build his physique on such a calorie-restricted diet, whilst others at the same time who competed against him had to consume enormous amount of food to reach his level of physique development. I am convinced that Steve may have followed the diet outline in the Steve Reeves Hercules cookbook either later on when he had already obtained the sufficient bulk and mass for his physique, or perhaps used as a maintenance diet. It is well known that he used this diet during his movie career when he needed to slim down and not appear so muscular anymore as well. It may be that he also used this diet as a definition diet during his later competitions, such as the Mr. World and the Mr. Universe competitions. It is difficult to know, of course. However, having read these reports in two separate periodicals written in 1947, 
right after Steve's famous Mr. America win does lend me to believe that these diets are accurate, especially for a young 21-year-old genetically gifted bodybuilder who was looking at gaining muscular mass and preparing for his first national competition, all while training two hours a day, three times a week, and still following that up with an active day at the beach, performing gymnastics and hand balancing routines with friends again, as reported in the newspaper article swimming and laughing the days away, as a young 21-year-old should. Further, the photo documenting the entire food fest, well, as they say, a picture speaks a thousand words, and in this case, 6,000 calories. The 6,000 calories that Reeves would devour in 1947 in Chicago at the Mr. America competition. I think that this, at least, is the ultimate proof. So I do hope you have enjoyed this video regarding Steve Reeves' 6,000 calorie a day diet for the 1947 Mr. America competition. And if you have, please give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and please leave me your comments and click the bell button to be notified of future videos. What do you think of Steve Reeves' 6,000 calorie a day diet? I would like to hear your comments in the comment section. Anyway, that's it from me. This is the Golden Era book I'm saying. Bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how Steve Reeves developed his rib cage, I've got a wonderful new e-booklet up on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com, which explains a very rare and unpublished Reeves rib cage and full body routine. Of course, my website has many other booklets on Steve Reeves' methods, specifically how I developed my waist, how I developed my broad shoulders, and another ebook on how he developed his wonderful diamond-shaped calves. All available on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the Silver Era methods for spreading the scapula, I've been asked about this many, many times before. Check out my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com, where you're going to find, in particular, the book by Steve Reeves on broadening the shoulders. Steve explains many exercises that he used in particular, and he believes actually also help spread the scapula apart. You'll find this and much more on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platt, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin.
the right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from their truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you harder, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That this, no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have dragged so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was gonna explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.